you hear me? Let me turn the, uh, my gas fire off here. Because it's making a little noise and I don't want it to... I don't want the, the gas fire to interrupt our session because from what everybody tells me, I've been getting the message that although this camera has got good, uh, <clears throat> good HD quality, the microphone is not as good as the other one. Unfortunately, so I don't know whether that's an issue with the memory card that's in there or not. I'm not quite sure why it isn't as good. I suppose all these cameras, they, they do vary a little bit. And you know, when you buy something, you never really know, do you? Until you take it home and you test it, what it's really going to be like. Um, what I'm doing here is just thumbing off these small bottle vases that you saw me making uh, in the last clip. So it's very, very simply just, all right, because with my stick, I know I've said this 51,000 times, but with, with the edge of my stick, I have carefully, when I threw it, pared away, took away, cleaned right down to the root of the pot there. So there really is very little to, um, to clean off. So all it requires is, with my thumb, a bit of spit, or sponge with some water if you want to be more polite, but you know. Um, just to go over the, the hard corner there. And if you get it just at the right moment, um, it works a treat, you know. If you leave it till it gets too hard, you know, it doesn't, your thumb isn't enough to break that corner. And uh, so, bear that in mind. You'll notice that these bottle vases here that I've got are upside down. And you may think, well, why has he got them upside down? Well, of course, as a pot dries, you need to turn it the other way up, don't you? To, so the bottom also dries equally. Otherwise, you get a hard top and a soft bottom. So, I'm going to try to speak a little bit more loudly than I would normally to try to compensate for the lack of microphone sensitivity in this, with this camera. I also recommend that you turn your volume up on your laptop to the maximum. Okay, so as you can see, these bottle vases are now thumbed off they're pretty evenly dry from top to bottom. What I'm going to do right now, while they're face down, I'm going to take my seal and I'm just going to carefully seal them while they're in this position because while they're face down like this, they're easy to seal and quick to seal. So you just go along the board very very quickly, like that, they're all done. Finito! Right, what next? Um, what I wanted to do was, uh, I wanted to, actually I wanted to use my, my, um, my meat tenderizing mallet <laughs> to smash these bottle vases to smithereens. <laughs> no. Actually, whoa, what I actually really want to do is, and I'm not sure if I've left them a bit. I'm going to take this meat tenderizing mallet and I'm going to impress it into the side of this bottle vase. You see? It's going to give me an effect, isn't it? So I've done that on one side. 
I'm now going to do it directly on the opposite side like that and now I'm going to do it in between like that and like that and there we have the little bottle bars uh, impressed with the mallet. Let's do another one. Now I'm not actually using the mallet to whack the pot. I'm holding it up and carefully administering to the surface of the bottle bars the necessary um, amount of pressure. All good fun. All good fun what? Well, that seems to be working quite successfully. You know, when you see things around, you think, oh, I'll buy that. Hmm, maybe it will work. It may work, it may not work, but you never know. You'll never know unless you, you buy it and take it home and try it. And if the worst comes to the worst, well, if the worst comes to the worst, we can use it as a meat tenderizer. Can we not? Indeed we can. Right. Oh, I love impressing clay. It's one of my favourite things. You know, clay lends itself to be impressed. Doesn't it? I think it does. Hum, hum, ho. There's something else we can... Now, this one on the end here, I feel it's a little harder. So, I'm not going to press that one. This would actually look very nice with a celadon glaze or a maybe a temaku glaze. Temaku, for those of you who don't know, is a Japanese glaze, a very rich iron bearing glaze, generally high temperature stoneware, and it's usually black, brown in, in its colour. I wonder what would happen if I did whack it. Should we see? Bad shot for a start. <laughs> Can you see? I didn't make a very good shot of that one, but the others aren't too bad, actually. See? Take a risk once in a while. Don't, sometimes we tend to be too, you know what I mean, we're too cautious, aren't we? We're too, you know, we think, oh no, I can't do that. But you know, well, I've got a dozen here, so I can afford to, I can afford to take a risk, can't I, with one? I don't think it's, it comes out any better for taking the risk, except it's a little bit more, um, not so controlled, that's all. So you need to take a risk. Push the boundaries a little bit from our comfort zone. Voila! 
Do I feel a bit hard? You see? Quicker. It's quicker if you do it if you do it like that, but you have to kind of zone your zone your eye in a bit to um, to to get it right, hit it in the right place. two will leave blank because you know there's no harm in leaving things untouched because you may want to come back to this one later on and maybe do a, a pigment decoration on it so you don't actually want yeah so it doesn't matter you can leave some like that no problem yeah okay just try and give you a few ideas so, I hope you're going to hear this video a little bit more clearly, and please give me some uh, feedback. Oh yeah, before I go, I wanted to mention I've I've uploaded I've uploaded onto uh, Etsy. You know the Etsy shop. I'm sure a lot of you know. Anyway, there is a website that uh, deals mainly in handmade craft items, and uh, it's called. Etsy, and you can find it at www.etsy.com. That's spelled E T S Y. Etsy.com. If you put in my name in there, there's, I've up just recently uploaded quite a number of pieces of, of pottery of different kinds some raku, some um, stoneware. Please go there and have a look because I have lots of people inquiring, wanting to buy pots from me. And uh, unfortunately, all the, all the, let me come nearer to the microphone. Let me come nearer to you here. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the pots on my website I've actually disabled. They're not for sale. And you're probably saying, well, why is that? The reason is because they're not here, they're in Europe. And, um, it's just the hassle of getting them uh, packed up and sent from Europe all the way over here. So I've kind of I've disabled that, really. You can look at pots there on my website. My website, simonleachceramics.com. Please go there if you, if you want to. You can find other things there, like the plans for a leech wheel and a kiln design there, just a simple uh, downdraft kiln. Um, so... Check out the pots on it on Etsy and uh, yeah, buy them. <laughs> Don't just look at them, buy them <laughs> if you like them. <laughs> okay, that's it. Simon Leach saying, keep practicing. We'll see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>